copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 100. The body is shooting at a theater in Westwood. Stand by for further details. That's all. Roll the first. Okay, you got the key? Yeah, here it is. Boy, that you could jump and down the exchange, Pete. 
You're about as easy compared to my job, picking up films all morning and delivering them all afternoon. Uh, I know, but you ain't got my rheumatism. Hey, gee, this door wasn't locked. It wasn't? No. Is it? Yeah. Hmm, yeah. oh, that's funny. Oh, Mr. Stanley, I must have forgot to lock it last night. Hey, you never did that before, though. Well, you better remind him. Now, let's see. Where is this? Pick him up. Hey, 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 what is this? Pick him up and get inside real quick. Shut that door. Now, you open that safe. Is it you? Yes, you. But the door's on a combination. Well, I can't. Is he letting your ribs fall? Now, you open that safe, I'll let you have it. Right there. Well, I don't. Well, get on. I, I just called for the film. Open that safe. Well, you can ask the janitor here. I, I don't know anything about this place. Yeah, that's right, mister. He, he don't work here. Well, how about you, then? You work here, don't you? Uh, yeah. Okay, open the safe for us. Uh, I don't know the combination. Listen, I'm getting tired of this, Scudder. We're going to have that safe open and we're going to have to blow both of you to bits. Hey, hey, pipe down, Joe. I'm going to be coming. Step on the door here. I'll go on the other side. Hey, see, where the devil are you? Pick him up, mister. What? Hey, what is that? I said up. Get your hands away from me, sir. Why, you can't bluff me. Hey, you're bumping the guy off. Hey, come on, we got to get out of here. Yeah, I... I just... That's right. What's the matter, Joe? You got me. See, what do we do? Get going. Scram. I just... Make it okay. You better use this side door, huh? Sure. What about those mugs in the office? We can't think about them now. We pulled a beef. You said that guy's dead. Oh, sure. You pulled him. Well, yeah, but that ain't gonna help any now. Hey. So I don't see any car. You didn't expect me, did you? He wasn't a beaver until 11.30. Well, we've got to get out of here some way. Hey, there's a car. Across the street. See? The game's just getting out of here. Come on, let's go. I hope you'll have to tease me, listen. What's the chance, Jeff? This game's beating like that, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. Sorry. Hey, let me give you a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Oh, boy, what a brave she did me with you. Come on, pile in. I'm sorry, lady, but we better get to the receiver's hospital first. I'm certain, lady. Yeah, you wait here and I'll bring your car right back. Where the street? Well, I guess this is far enough away. Where are they? West Hollywood. Anybody follow us, we threw them off all right, going up over the hills. And it's this car. Yeah, well, what do we do then? Get a cab. Take a stand. No, you fool, don't pull up. One on the street in front. Oh, I get it. This will be all right along in here. Now, you get and get the cab. So the driver your pal's drunk. And come back and pick me up. Oh, okay. Be right back, sir. There you are. Just put up the side of that roof for there. Okay. Get your hand with my buddy, will you? He's just over here in the car. Sure. This is show on Battle of the OBD. Yes, that's right. I never took it myself. That's a good idea, huh? I'm trying off my uh, Let me give you a hand for now. Steady. Steady. A nice soft seat in the back for you. Okay. Okay, there we are. All right, Matt. Let's go. Let's go. Well, we got home anyway. How are you feeling, Joe? Pretty rocky. Put on the radio, will you? I play some music. Yeah. I guess I better call a doctor for it. Call a doctor? Are you, you rummy? We'll have a bull down on us in a minute. You better get some bandages. This thing will have to heal without a doctor. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Want to get in bed? No, I'll lay down on the bed and go. Well... It wouldn't turn hard like we figured, did it? No. It would have been okay if that guy had got it and kept his nose into it. Yeah. Well, here he was. Oh, but. Maybe somebody else with the same idea we had. How about getting me some bandages now, Doc? Oh, sure, I forgot. Huh? I haven't seen that. Oh, and so here's ten bucks. The last I got, but you probably need it worse than I do. All right. Where are you going? Well, I've been thinking... I better get going. I'm going to walk out on me when I got a bullet hole in me, huh? Oh, no, it is. Yeah, you got to that. If I hadn't got that gun out of the theater, I'd drill you the same as I did that guy out there. Oh, no, look, you're drilling me. What's that guy saying on the radio? Yeah. 
Two men said it, John and Stewart, Detective Lieutenant Kelly, the special officer of the Los Angeles Police Department, in the Red Bull Theater in our abode. Well, bring it to you. Read your local newspaper. And you read that, Joe? What is the cover you've been doing? Well, what of it? He said just the same. Yeah, but every bit in the world would be looking for us now. They'll never stop hunting when it's a cover of the bump. Come get mad, Joe. There's the ten bucks. All right, Rat, get out. Go on. Run down to the city hall and squawk to the Tito police. Go on. No, I won't squeal, Joe. You can count on that. Uh, you're not allowed to do anything. Go on, scram. The longer I look at your pen, the sicker I get. Well, so long, Joe. Sorry it didn't turn out the way we figured. If I get out of there, you'll hear from me later. And if I bump off, remember I got friends. Oh, gee, Joe, don't take that attitude. After all, I didn't bump off the copper. You did. Well, I've got to protect myself. Get out. Shut up. Hello. Hello. Let me address to 72581. Yeah, that's right. Good, Eddie. Think. We're going to be hooked around this town for him from now on. Hello, Eddie. This is Gil. Yeah, I know, but I couldn't meet that in Westwood. No, I got held up. Now listen, get over here right away, will you? Bring along some bandages and iodine. Yeah. Yeah, I just pulled a beef. I need some help. Hurry up. Get these people out of here. Okay, Lieutenant Condapper. Come on, folks. Let's get the room out here. Ah, young fella, you say these two men held up you and Pete the janitor? That's right. How do they look like? Well, I didn't get a good look at the one guy. He kept out of the light. The other one had on a blue overcoat. He was about 25, I guess. What kind of complexion? I couldn't tell. He had a scarf half over his face, and he wore a white cap. Third low over his forehead. Are you an American? Or... Hey, what is an American? The lady's car has been stolen, and we have a... Right, right, all right, lady. You can go in now. Oh, all my boy and Dave. trying to keep me out of this. I declare. All right, all right, lady. You're in now. What's the trouble? Well, I... I heard that a man had been shot here, and my car's been stolen, and I think you ought to know about it. Well, you see, madam, we're investigating a murder. Now, if you'll just report the theft of your car to the order detail, I'm sure they'll take care of it. Now, you. you look here, officer. If you don't hear me out, you'll be sorry. Oh, very well. Go ahead. Well, about a half hour ago, two men came across the street from this direction and got into my car. When I told him to get out, the one said he was taking his friend to the hospital, and they promised to bring my car back, but they haven't returned it. And I got to thinking that maybe they were the ones that did the shooting, and so what I did thought they look I... like? Well, one of them had on a blue overcoat. He was the one that was hurt. He said one of them wore a blue overcoat, didn't you, young fella? Uh, that's right, and a white cap. Did your man have on a white cap, lady? No. Did either of them have on a white cap? No, I don't think they did. Right. Right. Get the boys outside and tell them to look for a white cap. One of those big losses between this room and the other side of the street. Right. And what was the license number of your car, lady? Let me see. It was... 5B1895. Yes, that's right. 5B1895. Uh, uh, Thanks. Blue. Yeah. 1929. Well, broadcast that information right away. Hello, Jack. Tom Becker speaking. This is done for broadcast of all cars on CGPL and all points on state teletype. Ready? Stolen car. Morning connection with murder. Lieutenant Hugh Crowley. Badge number 17. 1929. Blue Plymouth Sedan. License number 5 Victor V, that's right, 1895. Suspect that that was escaped in this car. If found, hold, notify Central Homicide at once. And that's all. Get it out right away. Hurry up, folks. We found these outside. Oh, that's more like it. Ten finger stalls and the white cap. Well, what are those rubber glove fingers for? To hide fingerprints. But they shouldn't have thrown them away so soon. That car of yours will be covered with prints now. Hello, Hudson. Tom Murphy. Yeah. The next with the murder is Hugh Crowley. We just found the cat born by suspect number one. Yeah, we think he's wounded. Look, Hudson. Get the men out to cover cleaning and dying establishment. And run down this laundry mark. It's C, as in Thomas, C-153. All right. It wasn't me, Senator. I just took this up outside. Thanks. Hold a minute, Hudson. Matt just found one of the guns. Wait till I look at it. Take it open, will you, Matt? Yep. This is the one that did the business. Three shots and fires on it. Hudson, where well, is Smith and Weston Factory and find out who they sold a 32 20 revolver to? Sale number one, one, not eight, six. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And all the coroner's office.
officers to come out and pick up the body. <laughs> Avenue in Hollywood. 
Oh, I don't want to get those boys in trouble. You won't get them in trouble, Mrs. Matthews. They're in trouble already. Who's there? Who is it? Officers of the law. Officers of the law. One more said, Dan, come over your hands up. We've got you covered with a sudden machine gun. Oh, Lord, I should have known I couldn't get away with it. Come on, Green. Come on, wait a minute. I'm coming. Under arrest for the murder of Lieutenant Hugh Crowley. Not the cook on no. the hand. No, I didn't murder him. I didn't do the shoot. I didn't even have a gun. I ain't a murderer. Joe Regan did the shooting. You find Regan. He's the murderer. What do you say he's the Monday night? I don't know anything about Regan. I ain't seen him since Monday morning. I ain't been out of his place since yesterday. Well, you walked out on your pal after you were shot. Well, it wasn't a matter of walking out, but you said it was. I had a look out for myself, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I didn't get it, didn't it? Who moved Regan? I don't know. Who's again? I don't know. Well, you must have an idea. Who would Regan call after you, his pal, or walked out on him? Oh, don't say it that way. There's only one way to say it. Who would Regan call? Have you met him? Maybe. I don't know. Who else? Well, Eddie's girl, maybe. What's her name? Sally. Sally Walker. Where does she live? With Eddie? Well, not exactly. She's, she's got an appointment on Third Street. And the telephone's normally 28396, isn't it? Yeah. So how did you know? That's the other call from Regan's apartment, Ryan. You better take Green in and book him for yeah. murder. Well, oh, thank you, sir. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm innocent. Oh, pipe down, Green. And Ryan, after you've booked this guy, join me over to in Vermont. I'm going to stick this walker down. <laughs> monkeys of it. Leaving us in the drugstores by one entrance, not another, changing cabs, riding elevators in half a dozen office buildings. Yeah, she's a cagey, Dan. Yeah, she knew she was being shattered. Maybe. Maybe she was just playing safe. Yeah, we ought to pick her up. Yeah. If so that's smart, we'll never mess with that. How did go in to lead us right to Regan? Well, here's what you do, Ryan. Call headquarters and tell them to wire Bakersfield, says no in San Francisco to meet that ship. Tell them to follow her as we get there. Give them a full description. It'll be easy, though. She's the only dame on the plane. Hadn't they better arrest her? Then I'll leave them to a hideout, and then there's a matter of it. Come back here and ride. I'll get you back from Los Angeles, Inspector. Yes, sir. Let me... Thank you. Let me come in, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, didn't take you boys long to get here? Didn't take you time to insist the boys long to pick up our girls, Andrew. That was easy. She led us from the plane right to an apartment house on Church Street. They had her in jail an hour after she got in town. But no Regan, eh, Inspector? Nope, oh, no Regan. Young fellow with the name Eddie Matthews was with her in the apartment, but neither of them were talk. I claim they don't know anybody with the name of Regan. What did you find out about this Walker girl, Inspector? Well, she says she's up to her to see her mother. Hmm, that's the truth. It's the truth that her mother lives here. Nice old lady she is. And the little grocery store out in the mission. Respectable, law abiding citizen, eh? Right. That's just fine. Now make that girl talk. Stay on, will you? Right away. She's waiting in the other office. Bring the office there, Lynn Harry. Yes, sir. Will you come in, Miss Walker? Hmm. Good morning, Sally. Good morning. I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine, Sally. This is Lieutenant Condacker and Lieutenant Ryan of the Los Angeles Police Department. So what? Glad to know you, Sally. Uh, sit down, will you? Well, how about it? How about what? The mother of Lieutenant Crowley. I don't know anything about it. Where's Regan? I don't know what you're talking about. How did you leave Los Angeles so suddenly, sir? I just came up now to see my mother, that's all. Does your mother know what kind of camp you're in with Los Angeles? So what do you mean? I'm a respectable waitress. Did you know that your mother is in the outer office? What? Yeah. Well, I asked you to come down. She doesn't know why. Why, you... Now, if you don't come clean with this, we'll tell her it was a mistake and she'll never know you were here. You've got a nerve. Of course, if you'd rather cover up that rat, Reuben, and call the mother in and tell her what you've been up to in Los Angeles and we'll give the papers to Sarah. How do you think your mother would like that, Sarah? Well, how about it? Okay. You win. I'll talk. But you got to promise that Mother will never know about this. You can take my word for it, lady. She never will. Okay. Joe's pretty badly hurt. We got him in a p- an apartment over on Jesus. 
Yes, sir. Doing anything? No, no, sir, I guess. Boy, those are sure things, though. Have you seen a fellow instead of the hat? Let me go sell it in any hour. I do promise they'd be here by noon of the car so they could get me north now to the heat. Oh, they ought to be along any time now. You know, Blackie, this thing's getting me. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. I'm getting soft or something. I've been doing a lot of thinking laying here alone with this blood slug burning fire inside of me. I've been wondering what a weird wrong. What the devil are you talking about? Well, I guess it'll sound silly. Look, Blackie, I tried to pull a fast one, and what did I get for it? I bumped off a copper, and I got an armful of lead. I got every bull in the state of California looking for me. For what? Because I tried to make some easy dough. Because I tried to break the law. Say, Joe, you are going soft. Better have another shot of liquor. You're talking like a Sunday school teacher. Yeah, I'm beginning to think like one. Blackie, I'm, I'm beginning to think they're right when they say crime don't pay. <laughs> Open up, Open up, we'll blow up the door, though. Don't be a fool, Blackie. Drop that gun and open the door. What? Go on, do as I say. Ain't no sense bumping off any more cops. They always get there in the end. Yes, they always get you in the end. They got Joe Regan and hanged him by the neck until dead. They sent Jack Green to the gallows, but he fought the verdict and got a commutation to life sentence. With the knowledge that justice had been done, that the ancient law of an eye for an eye has been fulfilled, can never compensate the widow of Hugh Crowley for her loss. And what can assuage the breaking hearts of the mothers of Joe Regan and Jack Green? Two sons learn too late that crime doesn't pay. The splendid work of the men of the homicide squad in bringing these killers to justice is an empty victory. The real work of society has failed. Society is at fault in the inadequacy of its educational program, which must eventually convince every man, woman, and child of the futility of the idiocy of crime. Thank you, Chief Davis. Your police department operates a huge fleet, hundreds of police cars, motorcycles, police ambulances, and other emergency equipment, as well as a fleet of work cars. It is flattering that out of all the gasoline sold on this market, Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline has been selected as their official fuel. The contract for gasoline to operate police, fire, and emergency cars in Los Angeles Specified Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline exclusively because tests over a period of years have convinced Los Angeles officials, as well as officials of Oakland, Berkeley, Marysville, Hayward, San Diego County, Maricopa County, Arizona, and many others, that Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline excels in every requirement. It starts faster. It accelerates faster. It creates more power. And you get greater mileage. We want you to know, and we want every motorist to know, that Rio Grande Cross will continue to give more for the money than any other gasoline. Your, your neighborhood independent dealer has Rio Grande Cross gasoline. Ask him about the free gift of boys and girls. <laughs> Produced by William N. Robson. 
This is your announcer, Frederick Lindsley, giving you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company.